I welcome you once again to my YouTube channel where I talk about the Lordship of Jesus Christ, His power to save, to heal, to deliver, and to bless humanity. This video is a part two of the video I did earlier on titled Overcoming Temptations. In the part one of the video, I did a definition of what temptation is, some of the various types of temptation we are likely to face in life, and the real problem we are dealing with when we are tempted. I also emphasize the need to agree with the Bible that the real enemy we are dealing with is the flesh and not Satan, and that Satan is powerless without the cooperation of our flesh. He needs the cooperation of the flesh to operate in our lives. Therefore, let me advise that you see the part one of this video in order to have a balanced understanding of what we shall be discussing in this part two. Thank you for visiting once again. Let me start by trying to describe the temptation process as the Bible sees it. By this, I mean the process from when a person is tempted to the point when the fellow actually falls into the temptation. Oftentimes, we hear people say things like, how did I get into all this? Or, how did I find myself in this mess? By such statements, they make it appear as if they suddenly fell into compromise or sin. However, the Bible teaches and shows us that temptation has a process. It is a journey we embark upon before we eventually arrive at the destination of the compromise or sin. Most of the time, when people are tempted, they never plan to end up in compromise. But that is what will eventually happen if the temptation is allowed to run its full course or process. I would like to read from James chapter 1, verse 13 to 16. It reads, And remember, when you are being tempted, do not say, God is tempting me. God is never tempted to do wrong and he never tempts anyone else. Temptation comes from our own desires, which entices us and drags us away. These desires give birth to sinful actions, and when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. So don't be misled, my dear brothers and sister. Praise the Lord. From this passage, we see that there is a process of temptation that begins with our lust or desires. This passage defines temptation as when we are drawn away by our own lust. The Bible says it is our lust or desires that entices us and drags us into temptation. If we entertain this lust or evil desire, we will conceive or become pregnant with sin. If this pregnancy of sin is not aborted before maturation, we will eventually bring forth the sin or compromise physically. Let us look at the process. It begins with the lust and evil desires of the flesh. And this lust has a way of enticing us or seducing us to sin or compromise. As we conceive or as we become enticed or seduced, we conceive or become pregnant with sin. It's like a woman who got pregnant. In this case, the pregnancy we are talking about is lost, and the baby that is later delivered is the compromise of the sin. If we carry this pregnancy of sin long enough, one day we will deliver a baby called sin. This is when someone is said to have fallen into temptation. Again, the process starts with lust. A person carries the pregnancy of lust within himself, and over time the pregnancy matures, and the fellow delivers the baby of sin or compromise. Of course, if we continue in sin, as the Bible says, it will eventually kill us. The wages of sin is death, and the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. How do we, fall, how do we avoid this process being carried through in our lives? Firstly, is to know that lust or evil desires are aroused by the internal stimulus of our thoughts and imaginations. They can also be aroused by the external stimulus of sight, hearing, smelling, tasting, and touch. In other words, what you think about, what you imagine, what you see, what you smell, what you hear, what you taste and touch, 
can stimulate you to lust or evil desires. For example, if you think about something desirable long enough, you will soon begin to lust after it. To effectively avoid falling into temptation, we must arrest the situation from the point when we begin to lust or have evil or sinful desires. Let me give you a practical illustration. Most people who fall into the temptation of masturbation begins with lusting for sex. If this lust is not arrested, it may drag them into pornography or the actual masturbation scene. Again, those who fall into fornication or adultery begins with lusting after a particular opposite sex. If this lust is not killed, it will trigger a chain reaction that will lead the fellow into the real sin of fornication or adultery. Another example, many of those who eventually become hooked on drugs started with a lust for adventure or escape from some reality. Many of those who fall into financial crimes also started with a lust for money or wealth. Now, what is the role of Satan in this process? The role of Satan in the temptation process is to encourage us to satisfy the lust that is already working in us. Genesis chapter 3 verse 4 to 6 tells us the story about Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. God had given them clear instructions not to eat from a particular tree. But over time, they had thought about why would God ask them not to eat from that tree? They had looked at the tree, they had lusted at it, and Satan had watched them, I mean the serpent had watched them over time. And then one day the serpent came. I said, did God tell you not to eat of every tree in this garden? He says, yes, that particular tree, God said we should not eat it and we should not touch it. The day we do it, we will die. And the serpent said, no, you will not surely die. Go ahead and eat it. Praise the Lord. And then they went ahead and ate from that tree. And we all know what happened. They died the very day. Not physical death, but spiritually they died. And from that point, man began to have challenges with the issue of sin. Now, the serpent there is a symbolic representation of Satan. Adam and Eve were already lost in after the fruit. The serpent only came to provide an encouragement for them to satisfy their lust. It only came to encourage the lust that was already in them. If they had cautioned themselves at the point when they began to lust after the forbidden fruit, they might not have fallen into the sin. The serpent needed their flesh and their heart to lust after the fruit. The serpent needed their eyes to see and desire the fruit. The serpent needed their legs to walk to the tree. The serpent needed their hands to pluck the fruit and put it into their mouth. And the serpent needed their mouth to eat the fruit. They did all this by themselves. The serpent did not pluck the fruit and force it into their mouth. It only encouraged them to do what they had been lusting to do. Praise the Lord. Now here comes the reason why we need to be born again. To arrest the lust or evil desires of the flesh, we need a power that is stronger than the one that is generating the lust or evil desires in us. We have established the fact that the flesh is a tyrant. Its main business is to lust and to lust and to lust and desire satisfaction of that lust. Only Jesus Christ can give us that power to avoid falling into the compelling power of lust and sin. We need an empowerment that comes through salvation in Jesus Christ. Let me try to summarize. Most of the bondages, captivities, or afflictions we find ourselves can be traceable to a lust we entertain or a compromise we allowed. Of course, what we allow has a way of swallowing us. If we are not willing to end up at the destination of sin or compromise, then we must avoid embarking on the journey of lust. And of course, and if we begin to entertain lust or evil desires, we must also know that Satan is always standing by to encourage us to satisfy that lust. In closing, I would like to recommend the following solution steps. 
Firstly, we must repent of our sins and accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Secondly, we must be sincere with ourselves about the fact that we are entertaining some lust or evil desires in certain areas of our lives. Thirdly, we must repent of this lust and ask the Lord to help us to overcome it. Fourthly, we must avoid any situation or stimulus that will feed the lust. Number five, we must pray authoritative deliverance prayers to release our mind from the oppression of lust and evil desires. Number six, we must deliberately engage our mind with profitable and godly activities and desires. Number seven, finally, we must seek godly counsel or deliverance if we think we need one. Like I mentioned in the first video, sometimes the compelling power of sin or loss can be caused by an evil spirit. And in such a case, we will need deliverance from that spirit. For counseling or deliverance prayers, you can contact me on this telephone numbers, email, and address. Telephone number 070-6742-0125. Email bioowosheni at yahoo.com. And address Gethsemane World Prayer Center, Eleyele Ibadan. I'd like to pray with you now. Father, thank you for the grace we have again to look at your word and see how it can help us overcome this challenge of life. Father, I pray for my brother, for my sister who has been listening. I receive faith for them to know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. And I also receive power for them to be able to say no to sin. I receive grace for them to overcome temptation and to stand for Jesus Christ. I rebuke that power of compelling bondage and addiction. I command it to break now in the name of Jesus. I decree your release and your total freedom from that oppression in the name of Jesus. If you are sick in any part of your body, I command that you be healed now. I send the healing power of God into your body to set you free. Be healed in Jesus' name and be made everything whole. I rebuke that disease, that sickness, I command it to get out of your body. Be made completely well. In Jesus' name, God bless you. I look forward to your testimony.